Hello, War Fighters. War is hell. Welcome to the next episode of Alternate History, where we're taking a look at what could have happened had the West gone to war with Iran in 2007. Now, I did want to say this right out front, but things have escalated tension-wise, not only in this series, but in real life, or at least it had for quite a while. And one of the reasons why I hadn't posted anything is I was wondering what was going to happen in real life because I didn't feel like it would be appropriate for me to be posting content that would be uh, very similar to what would be happening in real life. But since things have de-escalated, at least that's how it appears and uh, armed conflict is not imminent, we're going to be continuing on with this series. All right, so we're going to be inserting for this mission via aircraft. And I'm not going to lie, I always get excited about being able to do uh, insertion via paradrop. So we've got the doors open. We're going to be jumping out in just a second. We're going to be a four-man uh, SEAL team. And I'm going to go into some of the information here in just a little bit before we actually get to the briefing. But here we go, jumping out. So once we hit the ground, it's going to be all about linking up with everybody. I've got one member of the team right below me. And he's going to open up his chute way after I feel comfortable <laughs> being able to do it. So he's definitely going to hit, uh, get to the ground first. I'm going to start working my way over to him. Now, the whole premise of this mission, as you can see, we're members of SEAL Team 2 is to provide some reconnaissance for the area that we've been focusing on in the past few episodes. Basically what's happened is as the United States has moved into Iran, they've been able to secure an area and they're not budging. So as Iran is trying to counter what the United States has done, there's a lot of resources that are trying to gather intelligence on what Iran's next move are. So our four-man team have been sent in to cover a road near one of the towns. Again, you're going to see it here in just a little bit as a uh, convoy is likely going to be moving through to reinforce the town that is the next major target for U.S. forces. So I will admit at the very beginning of this, there is a lot of recon that you're going to be seeing, but we are, of course, going to have some action in this. So make sure you guys hang on tight. And stick through the entire video all right so now that we've linked up with everybody else we're going to be proceeding to our uh point where we're going to be watching the road which is directly up ahead there's a large hill we're going to use that hill as the vantage point to be able to see everything so without further ado though and as promised let's go ahead and get to the briefing for this mission so you can see everything that is going on so we're a little bit east of where we've been at previously. Ban Rahman is going to be the town that the Iranian forces are looking to reinforce. But we've dropped a little bit further to the east, about right here. There is some terrain, as you saw as we were moving up, that's going to give us some pretty good uh, or pretty good vantage point over the area, especially the road that's being used by Iranians to reinforce the city. So we're going to radio back the things that we find here and we are under orders that if there is any weak spot in that convoy we're going to have to try and hit it and it's going to be pretty dangerous so this is going to be like hit and run is what we're going to try and do i do have some demo blocks with me just to kind of lay down on the road but not knowing exactly everything that is going to comprise of this convoy i don't know necessarily when i'm going to use them or frankly if i'm going to be able to use them at all so we've gotten to the crest of the hill. We're going to be moving down uh, to where the road is. It's in between not only where we're at, but also that hill in front of us. I'm going to make sure that I've got the AI set to not engage until I end up shooting first. That would be terrible as that convoy is coming by. And if we were to start shooting at it, well, we'd give up our position pretty quickly. There's really nowhere to take cover around here. I mean, there's some rocks, but as you can see, we get past this rock that's now passing us on the left. There's really nothing between us and the road, which has now come into view. Oh, we've got headlights that are up ahead. Going to move a little bit to the left so we can get up a little bit closer without being spotted. Got to use the terrain to our advantage, basically. Uh, at least that's what I'm going for right here. As we get closer, I just may be able to use my rifle to get a good look at what exactly we are up against. Already I can tell that that vehicle is armed. Got to make sure everybody gets as close to this ledge as possible. I mean, I don't want him to be kneeling, but honestly, 
since two of my guys have uh, AT, I definitely want them to be in a position where they can fire. Because if they go prone, they're not going to be able to engage. They've got to be either standing or kneeling. All right, so two guys are hanging out. There's another vehicle that's coming down the way. I wonder if that is the lead vehicle for the convoy, just scouting ahead, making sure that everything is clear. So with him, as he's moving up, since we didn't engage him, and I really don't think at the speed that he was going, he would have even noticed us. I'm feeling pretty confident that we're going to be seeing the rest of the convoy rolling through. It's this particular vehicle, though, that does kind of worry me. Uh, since I do have night vision and they don't, it does give me a little bit of an advantage. Also, I should be worried about helos that are in the area. These guys, as they move up over here, could radio in our position if we're spotted. Again, we don't have much cover. And so using like the trees really out of the question here. It's just a matter of hoping that we don't get spotted and that our camouflage is going to be able to do the job. But so that's two elements of recon. Unless, of course, that's got a very important person for the Iranian forces. Now we're getting word on the first bit of the convoy is coming in. It looks like that this is going to be a... Uh, small supply convoy so we've got ammunition we've got fuel we've got engineers that are part of this and so this might be a pretty tempting target for me I'd like to be able to take out the supplies as quickly as possible because if I can do that then that's gonna make it very difficult for them to maintain operations at the same time though I don't know it doesn't seem like there's really too much as far as supplies. We'll have to take a look here as it passes by. Uh, they did come up pretty quick, so I don't have my demo blocks on the ground. So if I were to engage these guys, uh, I'd be doing this the old-fashioned way. They're slowing up once they got to that vehicle. So the covered trucks are the ones that have ammunition in them. And then we've got... Uh, other ones that are carrying fuel, like that one right there. There might be some repair trucks in there too. Oh, but look at what we got in the back. This is this is what's pretty key. So the two rear vehicles are anti-air guns. So if I were to open up on them, I'd be taking fire from those two guns, and that would just uh, that would destroy me. Oh, we've got a helo coming down to the right side. Or to the, yeah, to the right side of the road if we're facing towards the direction the convoy's coming in. Oh, dang, I didn't tell my guys to go prone. I'm hoping he didn't spot us. We'll have to wait and see, though. All right, still nothing. Okay, so again, we're getting eyes, and you saw just a little bit ago, I was looking at the next bit of the convoy that was coming up. From what I could tell, we've got BMPs, BTRs, we have some M60 patents too. So this is going to be the heavily armed or armored portion of the convoy. This also is not going to be a target that I'm going to want to take out. Uh, I have four demo blocks and that's not going to be enough to take these guys out, even with the two AT sticks that we have. Looks like that they're fully loaded with infantry too. Which is smart from their standpoint, having infantry and armor support one another. But it's going to make it impossible for my four-man team to take out this many uh, hostile forces. So we're going to let these guys pass. But this is something we definitely want to be able to radio in. Uh, so that way we've got aircraft overhead to be able to take these guys out. The idea with Rand's defense is that these types of assets, they want to be able to move them inside the town like... Uh, the one that they're moving to specifically to try and neutralize any technological or military advantage that the United States has. Because when you're in that close urban combat uh, or urban uh, warfare scenario, it's very difficult uh, to be able to leverage some of the United States' strengths. So these guys, if I can get them with precision munitions or just you know even unguided munitions, if an A-10 can do it well, that's going to be better. We engage them out in the open then inside of the town where we could risk additional uh, casualties specifically to civilians. 
All right, these guys are moving up pretty slowly, but there might be more of these guys inside of the uh, inside of the convoy. And see, so here's the tanks coming up. These guys comprise the rear of this portion of the convoy. I had thought about maybe sneaking in behind these guys, and then going through and, and dropping in the. Uh, the explosives that I have but I don't know I have to wait and see I haven't spotted anything yet uh, coming down the road after these guys so this could be advantageous for me because this could be the window that I have to be able to lay these things down problem is though and I have waited here for quite a while still not seeing or hearing anything coming down this way um, Again, I don't know what's coming next. What if we've got another, you know, big wave of, of armor coming in? I'm going to be here for a little bit longer. I don't know. Maybe we got soft targets coming. Because one thing I haven't noticed in this convoy is infantry. Now, moving down to the road, and this is where I'm going to set the demo blocks. And again, this is where having night vision is advantageous because I've crept up pl uh, pretty close to these guys, and they have not been aggroed. I don't want to necessarily push my luck. So I'm going to move to one of these, you know, bits of brush right here. And what I'm going to do is behind them, I'm going to start setting some demo charges. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and connect them here to, um, to my firing device. The reason why I'm going to put these demo blocks behind some of the brush is that way as vehicles are passing down the road, there's less of a chance that they're going to spot them. and I'm hoping they don't radio it in. Cool. All right, there's two. I've got a total of four demo blocks. So each time, I mean, again, I've done it twice, but it's just setting down the demo charge, connecting it to the firing device, and it just moving on. So we have radioed everything in up to this point. We've got a, a 10 that is on the way right now just to kind of help cover us. I think that'll probably be the biggest bit of help and probably will do the most amount of damage for this particular scenario if I could time it right. Uh, making sure the coordinates that are set are the road, which I'm now hearing something coming down from it now. Unfortunately, you have that hill uh, right before or right after that vehicle here. Yep. Wouldn't have been able to spot him. All right, he's he's getting out of here quick. Who that was close. I'm half tempted to engage these guys, but I don't I don't want to do that. That's going to be a dead giveaway. There's hostile forces here. What I'd like to be able to do is keep them alive, just so I can trap one or maybe even two vehicles right here around uh, these demo blocks that I have. It's not the prettiest layout. I mean, I should have done something kind of like alternating, um, but that's fine. We're going to be okay. I'm also not going to set anything right on the middle of the road, by the way. It's all going to be on the side uh, just for the same reason. I, I don't want uh, don't want them to, to be able to see what I'm placing here or have a, a decent chance of being able to spot what's going on. Oh, why is he standing? I'm heading back up right now to the position that I was occupying earlier. This is not a position I, I really would like to hold. So I'm going to move off over to these rocks directly up ahead and kind of use that for cover. We've gotten some indication on what is coming. And so we do have infantry that's coming in trucks. So I'm hoping that these explosives will be effective enough. See, there they are. I mean, the idea is, is I want them to be effective enough to where they stop the uh, front vehicle. And then we can go ahead and call in that air support to be able to take out, preferably, the rear. I don't think we're going to be able to eliminate all of them because four against, I think there was seven or eight vehicles that we spotted, each of them with a squad in there. So seven or eight squads against a four-man team is not going to be the kind of fight that I want to be in. So these guys are just your general line troops, not conscripts or, or new conscripts or anything like that. So I do somewhat worry about these guys. They're not the elites, obviously, but there's just enough of them that I could go down here pretty quickly. Okay, they are a lot closer now. 
Again, when they're in range, I'll detonate the explosives, but I might have to call in the A-10 to start dropping bombs now that it is on station. I'm going to make sure we get the timing of it just right, so I'll be coordinating with them. Perfect. I think now is the time. Okay, so we're calling in the airstrike. He's coming in on the attack run. And once this guy just moves forward... I'm going to have to lose sight of him. Alright, perfect. We are good. Ha! Ah. We destroyed what I felt like was the biggest threat right there. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up. <laughs> Airstrike. Yeah, it is cleaning up at this point. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it in one shot though. I'm gonna I'm gonna move back. I felt like I'm a little too close to that convoy. At least I don't need to be that close. Uh, if I can find a good position to be able to rest my weapon, I should be able to aim pretty accurately and take those guys out. Obviously, that further range, it's gonna be more difficult for them to hit us. So that's that's one of the reasons why I'm wanting everybody to follow back. We can use the rock formation to our right, uh, which you can't see right now. But there you go. Off to the right is cover. Uh, as we advance backwards. So I'm going to start moving to that location and make sure I get everybody else following me. We're definitely going to want to move together as a team because while I think the enemy is going to be reeling from taking four demo charges, uh, airstrike, and also a couple AT rounds, uh, they're going to be slow to move to us. But this was not something that I was anticipating. Off of the distance, we've got four helos that are coming our way. I don't know if this is their QRF or what, but we've already made it up and over the hill. We're going to start heading down to this position that is up ahead. What I've done is I have called for pickup from our emergency uh, evac bird, which is still across the border. Now I haven't pushed too deep into Iran yet, so it shouldn't take them too long to get to us. But again, this is, this is not what I was expecting was gonna happen. I'm gonna put my guys back on fire on my lead. I don't want them to start engaging these helos as they fly over. Uh, that'll definitely give away our location. We'll probably take some heavy fire back from them. And yeah, looking at the, the range, it's not like they could hit anything. But who knows, maybe their heavy weapons would, would get one hit on us. Okay, I am watching that hill behind us, or the top of the hill, to see if anybody does come up and over. Because like I was saying, I think they're going to be reeling from those hits, but I've only seen two helos come up over the hill remember there was a total of four so there's a very strong possibility that the other two have kind of landed at the ambush site if they can get everybody together and push up over this hill uh, this is going to be really problematic for us as much as possible i'm trying to bound with the ai so i'll push up they'll kind of push up too i'll stop turn around as they kind of get into position and just kind of inch my way basically towards where we've selected for the lz because of all these rocks, it's not going to be easy to find a spot uh, for the helo to land. And once it does get in position, what I'm going to have to do is throw an IR grenade uh, so it sees where we're at and find an LZ that's kind of close to that. So it won't be like right on top of us or anything. Okay, yeah, they're spotting the the helicopter. Still not see. Oh, I was right. There's a squad coming up over that hill. They're moving towards us pretty quick. We're going to have to engage them. We might be able to slow them up enough if they get into cover. There's one down. Yeah, if they start moving into cover, we may be able to move faster than them. Oh, I'm taking, like, all the fire it feels like right here. This rock. I'm glad I got behind it. Time to go with the 40 Mike Mike. This going to be the best way, I think, to try and hit these guys. That uh, was short. And there we go. Add a little bit more range. Perfect. Right on him. All right. Time to keep going with this. A little bit higher so we can go deeper into their formation. I don't want to use all of them right now. I don't know how many forces were inside of those helos, nor do I know uh, what... Like, what force was in there? Gosh. My dudes are just lying prone right behind me, not doing anything. I'm, I'm literally engaging this squad solo. 
So I got to get him back up. We're going to try to see if I can put him in a line and keep him prone at least. Or maybe just move him up there. Okay, now I'm starting to get some more fire going past me. So I think they might be engaging my guys. All right, we've dropped another one. I'm looking to see if anybody else is, is coming down, maybe from the left. Ah, oh, dang it, I've been hit. All right, let's bring up the medical menu and see where I've been hit. Ah, oh, the arm. Okay, I'm just going to have to apply a tourniquet. I'm not going to go with the splint just yet because I feel like I have to stay in this fight. If things start to slow down a little bit or the rest of my guys start helping to pick up some of the slack here with uh, engaging the enemy, I'll probably stay behind this rock and keep working on myself. But I've, I've stopped the bleeding. That's the most important part. Ah, dang it, I'm out again. All right, back in it. Yeah, there's a lot more fire. I feel like you're coming. There's coming uh, my way. We might have another squad somewhere on the top of this hill. Now they are using cover pretty well as they're moving towards me. Let's kind of give them a, a moment of pause here. If they're thinking about continuing to push down this way. That was a pretty good shot. Had to have done some, dam uh, some damage to him. Okay, you know what? Let's let's apply this split because I'm having a hard time being able to keep a steady aim on these guys. There we go. All right, got a few guys that are out in the open. There's two more that are down. Yeah, they've made it a lot closer. That's got to be a second squad. Let's see if we can hit that rock behind them. Good shot. I'm really on it today with the the 40 mic mics. Like, I'm half tempted to just keep it up. But they seem pretty scattered now. Still having a hard time being able to keep a steady aim. Luckily, my guys are helping out, and I feel like we're we're going through these hostile forces a lot faster. You know what? That might be like three squads, to be completely honest. I keep hitting the rock in front of me. Got one as he was running away. Okay, I think we're going to be able to get out of this one all right. At some point, I do want us to start moving. But that is some pretty good cover. I think if I get down the hill just a little bit more, then I'll be out of their range. Or really out of their sight, I should say. But I've got some guys moving up on the left. And I'm worried about these guys chasing me. I don't know. They might stay in cover here for quite a while. Okay, there's a, a few more here on the right side. What I might do is just start right, work my way uh, kind of over to the left. I'll have my guys move up, see if we can finish these guys off. I'm going to time to reload again. Oh, they're not moving. There's this one guy over here. There we go. I was half worried that with him over there that we'd have another squad coming from the left side that we'd have to turn our attention to. I think this guy behind the rock, yep, he might be the only one left. We're looking pretty clear. Oh, he got back up. There we go. Now we've got him. Anybody else? All right, let's start moving back. We've got a long way to go. Problem is, we've got now forces between us and where our LZ is supposed to be. Might be kind of hard to spot them, but there's two squads that are down there. 
If we start engaging him at this range, we might be able to get some hits on them before or without them being able to see where we are. It's really hard to be able to hit these guys from from this distance. I don't want to stay here for too long. So that's why we're going to just keep moving. We'll probably have to engage him at a much closer range than this. Oh, there's one more guy up here. I don't want this guy to figure out where we are. Okay, again, time to get moving. Now, I'm being told that the helo that we've called in is just about five minutes out. It's rushing in pretty quickly. So we just have to hold out here for five more minutes and continuing to move down the hill. I'm going to give him a new LZ. I'm going to give him right here. Oops. Just going to give him that LZ, and that's where we're going to have to proceed to. It's a little bit closer to where we were. But those guys are pretty close, actually, to, to where that position is. He might have to, you know, once he gets here, I might call him to stay up at a higher altitude and kind of use his guns to engage these guys. I mean, that'll be a huge help if we can do that. Okay, so I hit this, the guy out front. He's going to be walking. I'm debating whether or not I should even take him out because everybody else will move slowly. But again, that wound to my arm... Is becoming a problem. I gotta stay behind this rock again. Right, these guys are gonna move up pretty quick on me. And again, these guys have scattered to the point where using a 40 millimeter grenade is not going to be too effective. Okay, but I've dropped three. Gotta get this guy who's kind of trying to hit us on the right side. Ooh, that's a lot of fire coming my way. Gonna move over here though, try and change positions. Maybe it can get a better shot at some of them over here. Okay, we've got about six of them who are right there who aren't really engaging us. But I'm hoping to stay prone right here and get some more solid shots since I can rest my weapon on the ground. I don't have the full cover, obviously, of the rock, but I'm a harder target to hit. There we go. Then we'll drop a few more. I gotta be running low on ammo. I don't think I have too many mags left. Oh, we, we're taking fire from behind us. Yep, there's guys just cresting over this hill. Oh, this is not good. We're being hit from two sides right now. Most of my guys are focusing on the people at the bottom of the hill. I'm going to focus on the guys who are up here at the top. Oh, jeez. I've been hit again. Oh, in the chest. All right. Gonna apply the bandage to get back into the fight. Oh, one more. I probably could have kept fighting, but I just want to be safe. All right, we get this guy here too. Got more. Yep. reload again. I don't have as much cover against this rock what I've had previously. Ah, dang it. Ah, dang it. I'm down. Honestly, with that, I'm not going to be able to get back up. AI is not going to be able to revive me, especially with all the guys that are around him too. Um, 
I'm not gonna make it. So this is going to be a mission fail from the standpoint that I did not survive it, but we were able to successfully take out a chunk of the convoy, particularly the infantry, which I feel like would be much harder to spot, obviously, inside of a town. And you're gonna find these large armored vehicles and stuff. So that is gonna be it here. Thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you wanna see more of this alternate history content. Make sure you like the video and comment. Tell me what it is you enjoyed. Uh, because that's always helpful in knowing how to proceed with these types of missions in the future. Also, if you want to support me and help me make more content like this, Patreon is the best way to do it. You're going to find the link in the description below. If you'd also like to join the War is Hell Discord, join in on the conversations we have. That is another thing that you'll find in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate it. War is Hell. You don't have to worry because Warfighters, I got your six.